Hello, welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. And uh, for the next hour, we're going to uh, practice our English by doing some reading and having some discussion. We'll be, no doubt, learning some new vocabulary words as we explore uh, the 16 the 16 most expensive substances on earth. Uh, the class will be taking turns, reading uh, some material, and um, maybe discussing a little bit about these substances and if, if you've ever used them, if you've ever seen them, if you have any, do you know what it is, uh, what is it used for, etc. Hello, Max. Hello. Hello, Max. Uh, okay. Max, we're going to be uh, doing some reading. We're going to learn about the 16 most expensive substances on Earth. Um, before we do, do you have any guesses what's going to be on the list? <laughs> I suggest... Maybe it's obvious. It's like uh, diamond and gold and maybe some materials for from uh, people body. I don't know. Maybe, hmm. maybe blood or, or something. Like oh, that. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, diamonds. Gold, I think those are pretty good. Anyway, pretty anyway, pets. diamond. Yeah. Anyway, diamond usually is a, a dime a dozen. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it's. Mm, I've read about it like uh, when. Uh, Hard to explain in English. <laughs> oh, you're you're <laughs> saying that diamonds can be yeah, a, the, a dime a dozen. Just to yeah, share yeah. Idiom yeah. that you use. Very cheap, in other words. Because yeah. they can be man made. Yeah. They, they can be they can manufacture diamonds. Uh well yeah, that's true. And they often do because diamonds are used in a because they're such a hard material, they're used in a lot of in, for in a lot of industrial purposes. Cutting, cutting rock, cutting steel, cutting, 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 cutting anything. They're used for various types of, uh, yeah, industrial uses. I think uh, I'm reasonably sure that they use man-made diamonds for all those things. Right. Um, true. Uh, let me welcome Ismail. Hi, Ismail. Hi, Oakley. How are you? I'm doing okay. Thank you. I'm good. Uh, Ismail, we're going to look today at uh, the 16 most expensive substances on Earth. Um, Max, pick a guess that gold would be on the list, diamonds. Uh, Ismail, is there anything that you think will probably make the list? Sorry, Oakley, could you repeat again? Sure. What substances do you believe might be on the list of the 16 most expensive substances? Uh, uh, maybe uh, gold, bore, mm -hmm. diamond, and I remember only those things. Well, gold, gold, diamond. What was the other thing you said? It's a uh, uh, mine, but uh, maybe I I explain in a bore. Bore. It's a precious metal. Uh, they have many indus industrial. Uh, Use. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Maybe I'm not 
familiar with that. Um, hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, diamonds and gold. Well, that leaves <laughs> at least 14. I'm not sure about that other thing you said. I don't even know what the, that is, I guess, unless I'm misunderstanding you. Uh, okay. Where do you think uh, both of you pick gold and diamonds? Where do you think diamonds will end up on the list of 16? We're going to do a countdown from 16 for the the cheapest or least expensive of these uh, 16 substances to the the ultimate most expensive substance on Earth. <coughs> so, uh, where do you think diamonds will come in? Number 10? Number 5? There, no <laughs> there is no in list or... There is a list. We're going to take a look at the list. We're going to we're going to do some reading. I'm just uh, I'm just giving uh, a chance for people to join the class and talking to you gentlemen for a minute about what you guess might be uh, on the list. Oops. Maybe. Uh, uh, where do you think that might come in? Okay. Oopsie, okay. Hang on. All right, well, uh, all right, just give me a second. We'll uh, we'll take a look. Let's take a look. I'm going to do a screen share of a website here. Hopefully you can see this. The 16 most expensive substances in the world. Uh, okay, let's take a look. Uh, all right. Here we go with uh, number 16 on our list. Uh, Max, can you see that? Okay. Yeah, saffron, but I'm All not right. sure what is it. <laughs> it's, it's that stuff right there. <laughs> There's a picture of it. Uh, can you can you read it for us? Or is it? Are you able to read that? Yeah, saffron has an aroma and flower which cannot be duplicated, and a chemical makeup which. When understood, helps the chief, chef, 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 or home cook to know how to best release that flower and aroma in cooking and baking. Saffron is sold in two forms: uh, powder and threads, and each behaves very differently in the kitchen. The article contains more of the botanical and culinary background of the expensive plant. Okay. This is, it's a, it's a plant. It's a part of a plant. Uh, any guess? Oh, boron. Oh, okay. Interest, uh, now I see Ishmael. Okay. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, Max, it's a part of a plant. Can you guess what part of the plant it is by looking at the picture here? No. <laughs> no idea? Uh Actually, I, as you may know a little bit about my background, I used to be a chef, and uh, I used this substance, uh, saffron. This this is considered uh, a spice, not an herb, because herbs are leaves of plants. This is a different part of the plant. Ismail, uh, have you ever heard of saffron? Yes, luckily. We produce it. All right. Yeah, right. You're... That's right, I forgot where it comes from. Absolutely. Uh, that area of the world, uh, mid-Central Asia. Um, right. Uh, okay. Uh, do you know what part of the plant saffron is? These little. This is a picture of threads, obviously, not powder. Uh, actually, I didn't... Uh... See, but uh, saffron uh, are produced in Tur Turkey in a city, and it uh, it is producing uh, too little, and it is very uh, it cost very high. Yeah. I bought uh, one gram uh, for uh, for uh, our kitchen. And I I pay a lot. 
Yeah. I think uh, it is. It, it seems to be a like a rose, and people uh, try to uh, collect from the inside of the rose this. Uh, how can I say this small uh, things with with uh, their hands. Yes, they do. Yeah, exactly. I found it. Harvest it. The demon. Very good. Uh, this is a just a little. If you look very carefully at a flower, um, there are things called stamen. These little thread-like things that kind of are in the middle of, uh, in the usually towards the middle of the flower. Maybe not always, but basically these are the things that have the pollen, and the pollen when bees or, or ants or insects or birds, in some cases, move from one flower to another, they they get nectar, they brush against these little stamen or little threads and pick up pollen. Um, and then they, they that's how they, they pick up pollen from the stamen, from the little, these little tiny threads, which as Ismail notes, have to be hand harvested. There's no mechanical means to harvest this. But, Ismail, you said you bought a gram and it was quite expensive. I also, it is. I will vouch for that. It's extremely expensive. But on the other hand, one good thing is a gram of saffron it is extremely powerful as, an, as a spice. Very powerful. Would you agree? Uh, it yes. takes very, yes. very little. Oh, yes, Oakley. For example, if you prepare a rice, uh, you use uh, only one or two uh, of these piece, pieces. That's right. To, to change the uh, color and give them a, a smell. That's absolutely correct. Uh, it is enough. It is enough. <laughs> Ismail is absolutely correct. A couple, three threads is enough to cook, you know, um, uh, a half a kilo to a kilo of rice. I don't know, two to four threads. Takes almost nothing. And it turns the rice a uh, bright yellow color. And it yes. really does have a taste. You really can taste it. It's amazing that such a tiny amount can cause the dr dramatic color change and taste change. So yeah, this this jar here in this picture, gosh, I don't know. That's enough for like, uh, I don't know, two, three hundred kilos of rice there, maybe more. <laughs> Five hundred? I don't know. That's it's enough for a lot right there. All right. So pretty amazing. And rice is the first thing I think of when I think about using saffron. It's very because it spreads throughout the cooking of the rice, it's very easy. Also, bread I've seen people cook with saffron. It makes it really yellow bread. It's, it has a unique flavor. I haven't seen that very often. It's very delicious, though. I really have enjoyed it. Uh, okay, let's let me see if I can move to the next one. Oh, number fifteen on our list. Well, well, well. Here's our old friend. Uh, here's we, here's your guess. Uh, Do you use new browser? Okay. <laughs> um, like... Oopsie. Uh, oopsie. Let me try that again. Uh, okay, here's here we go. All right, that should work. Uh, okay, uh, Ismail, can you read about gold? Gold doesn't make it very high up on the list. It's only a little. It's only above saffron. Yes, uh, unfortunately. Both lose their uh, importance <laughs> with the time. With time, very true. Ismail, can you read uh, this? Can you read this one? Okay. Thank you. Poor gold is soft and you is usually alloyed with other metal metals such as silver, copper, platinum, or palladium to increase its strength. Gold alloys are used to make jewelry, decorative items, dental fillings, and coins. 
Gold is a good conductor of heat and electricity and does not tarnish when it is exposed to the air. So it can be used to make electrical connectors and printed circuit boards. Gold is also a good reflector of infrared radiation and can be used to help shield spacecraft and skyscrapers from the sun's heat. Gold coated mirrors can be used to make telescopes that are sensitive to infrared light. Learn more about this glittering precious metal from this article including more about how it's weight and measure. Okay. So, uh, the most, uh, one of the best substances to use building your spaceship is mail, <laughs> at least to the outside of the spaceship, would be gold. Yahoo. And that's why no space aliens come to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> they know we would kill them all and take their spaceship and melt it down. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, okay. Do you have any gold items, Ismail? Do you have, uh, does yeah. your wife have some gold earrings or something of that nature? Jewelry? Uh, actually, I don't like to wear some uh, uh, gold metals or different uh, mm -hmm. items which, which is produced from different metals. Even... Uh, to wear a watch is sometimes uh, heavy for me, Oakley, but my wife uh, wears many gold items uh, yeah. on her necklace, earring, and on her right. hands. Sure. Yeah, I, I, me too. I'm not a big fan of jewelry. Uh, me neither. Some cultures it's very, very important and, and a very kind of embedded part of the culture in the, uh, some places in the, in the Middle East and in um, India as well. It's very common yes. for people to uh, wear a lot of gold. Yes, there. there are some provinces in the east side of Turkey, in some small village people uh, uh, are uh, buying uh, gold with kilos during the uh, wedding ceremonies as a uh, gift. Right, 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 right. That's that's right. I've heard of that before. Yeah. You know what else I heard? I heard some guy, I'm not sure the size, but some guy in China just walking through his field, some poor, like, yak farmer or something. <laughs> Stumbled over like a, a ridiculously like the largest gold nugget ever. Did it, did any of you guys read about that recently? It was some ridiculous like three kilos or something, something enormous, giant nugget like like this picture here that that would be called a nugget. We con we commonly nugget. call nugget a gold nugget. Uh, Oakley, I heard that an Indian uh, businessman uh, get prepared a pullover uh, with gold for uh, for his, and it takes uh, three or five kilo. I I couldn't remember now, but and oh he he is going to wear gold pullover uh, during. Uh, <laughs> Their special time. <laughs> Gold pullover. Oh yes. my gosh. Well, he won't have to worry about uh, infrared radiation. So that's <laughs> good for him. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, okay. Let me let me welcome Wellington. Hello, Hello. Wellington. Hello again. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Thanks. Uh, okay, we're, we're going to look at our next. This is a, a new one. This is something I don't really know anything about. Uh, our next item on our 16 most express, expensive substances. Uh, here we go. Uh, Wellington, can you educate us about this substance, please? Can you read this? Okay, let's go. Rhodium, um, $58 gram. Hmm. William Hygie. 
Wollaston, who also discovered palladium, which doesn't appear on the list of most expensive substances. An English chemist discovered rhodium in crude platinum ore. True, the name comes from the Greek word for red. There's nothing red about it. It's strong, hard metal, and is often used to improve the hardness and conductivity of other metals. See this article to learn more on the properties of erosion, its molecular structure, chemical properties, and industrial uses. Okay. Uh, we can kind of ignore the last paragraph, I guess, as we're reading this, because there's some click-throughs if you want to find out more about these things. But, uh, okay, have you, uh, Wellington, have you ever heard of rhodium before? No, no, I, I didn't see heard about this, about this substance. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, it, it's interesting. Nobody goes and collects rhodium. <laughs> <laughs> that I know of. Somebody does. Somebody must. What am I talking about? Uh, okay. But uh, I suppose it's uh, used a lot, as it says, in, in uh, making, uh, mixing it with other metals. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. To improve the conductivity of the other metals. No? Right. Conductivity. So, probably, I, I don't know, but Probably you would find rhodium in things like your smartphone or, or uh, your computer. Uh, hello, Jose. Hello, teacher. Uh, nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Oh, hang on just a second, Jose. Um, Wellington, be careful. This word trips a lot of people up. The first word in the second paragraph, though. Though, though. the name comes from the Greek. And um, you will notice... If you haven't before, you will, if you pay attention, uh, although, with A-L in front of the word, is often used. And uh, there's no reason you, you couldn't. It's, it's basically writer's or speaker's option, if you want to use though or although, to introduce a contrasting point. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to number 13 on our list. Here you go. Uh, here you go, Jose. Jose? Yes. Can you read this? Uh, you've probably heard of platinum yes. before. Yes. Platinum is indeed a special substance with value in industry, ornament, and environment improvement. More than 20% of all consumer goods either contain platinum or our product uh, using platinum. It, it's in jewelry and catalytic converters, electronic and anti-cancer drugs, and eight tons of ore produced, or produced just and once of it. This article gives you much more detail on the many, many use and values of platinum. Okay. Yeah, as I said, in, we in, in, uh, including this is used as an investment. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, the last paragraph in each section is basically uh, a, a click through. If you want to find out more, you're welcome to. Uh, okay. Uh, Jose, uh, eight yes. tons of ore produce just an ounce of it. Uh, ounce is the correct pronunciation. Um. Okay. Yeah, an ounce. ounce. Okay. Right. Do you know how many grams are in an ounce? No, I don't have any grams or ounce of platinum. Of platinum. I, I believe it's twenty-eight. I know a lot of conversions off the top of my head because I have to deal with American measurements and other, the rest of the world uh, when I'm teaching. So, I believe uh, twenty-eight grams is in one ounce. So it takes eight tons of ore to produce uh, just 28 grams. So that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> um, lately I have seen some television programs, maybe you've seen them too, 
where people are stripping apart uh, things like electronics, uh, catalytic converters, different, lots of different things to strip out or remove the platinum. They melt it down. They have a melt. They do a melt. They melt it down and um, and sell it. So they're basically recycling it just to strip out for the for the platinum. And there's a lot of people who make a lot of money doing that. It's not that hard to find because it's as it says it's in 20% of all consumer goods. There you go. Uh, there's a possible career <laughs> for anyone. Okay. Is it easy to? to hmm? Is it easy to get uh, from a catalytic converter this? Uh, I, I don't know. Metal? Good. Uh, Good question. I don't know, and I furthermore, I have no idea how, what the uh, what the degree, how much is in there. I, I thought about that too. In in the United States, there are junkyards where somebody has a a piece of land, and they will just take. You actually have to pay them, and they take your car. But uh, there are junkyards with five hundred, a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand cars on them. Uh, I wondered yeah. about that myself. Probably, <laughs> I I heard a story before. Uh, one of my one of my friends uh, went to China and they bought there a, a rubbish uh, area and they they there are many uh, used uh, batteries there. They they get ah. uh, cup, copper. Or, oh yeah, right. From this battery, they melt uh, in a big pot all of the battery, and they uh, get copper from them, and they sell them. And it was very uh, lucrative business. It yeah. told me. Well, um, at one point, I don't think this is true anymore. So don't run out and. Do this. At one point, though, in the past, and this is quite some time in the past, American money, American coins, the one penny or one cent coins, were made of actual copper or uh, a large enough percentage of copper, because this is probably a, a mix of metals, but a large enough percentage of copper so you could buy pennies from the bank, melt them down, and then sell the copper, and you could make a profit. <laughs> <laughs> because there was more the copper was worth more money than the actual penny itself so there were people actually just buying pennies from a bank for example melt it down sell it and instant money instantly making their money back yes, yeah uh, luckily because the precious metals uh, cost uh, are sometimes uh, going uh, very high yeah Right, and it's very volatile. The price is amazing. Yes, yes. It moves back and forth, and uh, yeah, uh, I think since then they have changed the um, composition of uh, American pennies, so that that's <laughs> no longer the case. I, I believe they I, they had to do something about it. It was kind of a ridiculous situation. Ah, okay. Now get into some. Oh. oh, the bad stuff. Okay. <laughs> bad, bad, worth, black and bad. <laughs> worth more than gold. <laughs> okay. $100 a gram. Max, uh, can you read this? Let me Hang on, Max. Let me quickly uh, welcome Saud. Hello, Saud. Hello. Hi there. Welcome to the class. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Uh, in, hang on, Sad. We'll come around to you again. Max, can you read about number 12 on our list? You don't have to have a seen breaking bed to know that crystal meth is bad news. This synthetic simulant is powerful and highly addictive with numerous negative effects on a person's healthy health during use. During addict 
addiction, addiction and upon withdrawal. <laughs> the article provides more detail on all of uh, these aspects of math. It's chemical makeup, its effects, its uh, drawbacks. My yes. idea. Myriad, myriad yeah, yeah. drawbacks. Myriad means many and ver it means two things at once, many and a large variety. Uh, so a myriad, oh, I don't know, uh, linear, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was interested in a myriad of things. Uh, many, many things and a, a wide variety. Uh, okay, so there it is. The true name, methamphetamine, and uh, the nicknames just meth or crystal meth or crystal. I suppose there's a lot of other names that I don't really know. Here, where I live now in the Philippines, they call it shabu. I believe that's the same thing. <laughs> I don't know as I don't run around <laughs> getting it, but I believe it's exactly the same thing. In, the, in Far East Asia, we, they call it shabu as a nickname. Max, do you... Do people abuse this drug in your country? I think no. I think not. I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know either. I mean, uh, from the the television, very famous show that was on Breaking Bad, this guy. Yeah, becomes, I watched. Uh, you watched it, show. right? Yeah, all of them. All right. Yeah. The the fact is that this is pretty easy. Not, I don't know, fairly easy. From what I've read, it's fairly easy to create this for a normal human at home, as opposed to mining eight tons <laughs> of material to get one ounce. Uh, any bonehead can make this very expensive and very dangerous, extremely dangerous product at home. Uh, but don't try it, boys and girls. Okay. Let's uh, got to keep this ball rolling. We're we're halfway through the class. We've only made it to number twelve. Oh my goodness! Ooh, wow! Look at that! Um, wow. Okay, Ishmael, our next one here. Okay. Eleven right. rhino horn. One hundred ten dollars per gram. Med is expensive. And dangerous, but it at least does something. Rhino horn is even even more expensive, but sadly does does nothing as far as evidence-based medicine is concerned. Anyway, which wants its cures to be actually be shown to work before being prescribed? Demand for powder at rhino horn has spiked in Vietnam which is bad news for those hoping for a fix and worse news for rhinos. rhinos. This article further detests the enormous inflation of demand for rhino horn and its effects on rhino population. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, very expensive and pointless. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wow. Uh, Kind of mind blowing. I don't even know what to say about this. It's a marketing strategy, Oakley. I don't know. How are people so stupid as to do this? How how does this even continue in the modern world? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It makes me think if I tell people I can, you know, I don't know, find maybe some kind of volcanic dirt and convince them that it will make them live longer, that I can become very wealthy. <laughs> uh, yes, people. There are uh, many people in my country uh, who want uh, some special uh, prescriptions like this. Really? Uh, yeah. Who believe in this type of uh, advertisement? Yeah. I just I don't I don't even I don't understand. I don't know how it works. I well I guess. All right, I, drugs and drug dealers work. Why not fake drugs? <laughs> because that's all this is. It's it's totally a fake, but people buy it anyway. Uh, I don't know. Education, I guess. What is the answer? 
I'm not sure. Uh, all right. That's scary, though. I, I had no idea. And I guess that's why it's happening, because of that crazy price there. Uh, $110 a gram. Uh, okay. And yet another horrible thing that people want to do with their money. Uh, next one. Wellington. You read about this one for us. Okay. An airing. $113 gram. Heroin is processed for morphine, which is term comes from the pop poppy plant. Heroin usually appears as a white or brown powder. Street names for heroin include smack, H, skag, and junk. Heroin is a highly ad addictive drug, and it's used a serious problem. It is both the most abused and the most rapidly acting of the opiates. It is typically sold as a white or brownish powder or as the black sticky substance now on the street as black as black tar heroin. This article details the way it can appear the effect it has, and the specific legislation restricting its sales, production, processing, and use. Okay. All right. First of all, <coughs> uh, excuse me, uh, the H is not silent, Wellington, heroin. Heroin. And, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's processed from morphine, long I, not, not morphine or morphine, but morphine. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, now morphine is, of course, a highly effective and useful uh, pain uh, pain reducer, pain reliever. Uh, okay, is this a problem? Is there a problem in your country with heroin, Wellington? I mean, yes, yes, but uh, I think because of uh, it cost um, the people... Um, Change uh, used other drugs uh, because uh, the others are uh, more cheap uh, is cheaper than heroin. Uh -huh. um, uh, unfortunately, today uh, there are uh, many other drugs that uh, they are cheaper yeah. and the. The people uh, has the people has more access uh, is more access to these drugs. Aha, uh -huh. right. Unfortunately, unfortunate but true. Uh, okay, people pay. A, are you learning what I'm learning? People pay a lot of money for some very bad things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Crazy. This list makes me think people are insane, really. Oh, yeah. look, another one. Oh, look. It's just never-ending. Uh, all right. Uh, Jose, can you read about number nine? Coming in at number nine. Yes, nine. Cocaine. Uh, $215 uh, per gram. Cocaine is a bitter, addictive pain blocker that is extracted from the leaves of... a. Uh, Tritochicoin coca, also known as the coca scrap, a plant that comes from the Andean highlands in South America. Cocaine is the most powerful stimulant of natural origin. The name of cocaine came from the plant coca. When Coca-Cola first came out, it contained uh, 9 milligrams of cocaine per uh, glass. In 1903, it was removed. But the drink still has coca flavoring. See the article in Medical News today to learn about uh, cocaine, including its physiological effects. Then view this video, how cocaine functions on the human brain to further change your learning. Okay. Uh, enhance your learning. But Okay, so there it is, cocaine. And yes, the rumor that you may have heard that Coca-Cola contained cocaine. Yes, in fact, it did. And 
there you go. Until 1903, there was, in fact, cocaine in Coca-Cola. Uh, all right. But, and it still has the flavor. Interesting. So when they when you hear all that about the secret, <laughs> the trademark secret of Coca-Cola, <laughs> how they get it to taste like that, well, now you know. <laughs> Now you know part of the secret. All right, uh, Jose. Yes. Problem in your country? <coughs> yes, I think that in uh, in uh, Spain uh, some people consume consume uh, cocaine. I think. Mhm. Mm right. I I hear the news every day. Uh, I the people consume cocaine. Yeah. Uh, in the 1980s, it was a big problem in the United States, which wasn't just a problem for the consumer of this drug, but it was a, it may be a bigger problem for the countries where, where it came from. Uh, it created basically syndicate crime families that pretty much took over governments. Not a good thing. Uh, absolutely not a good thing at all. Uh, okay. Well, let's hope that there's more productive substances human beings pay a lot of money for. My goodness. Oh, no, it just gets worse. <laughs> it's not getting any better. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Jeez. Saud. Uh, okay. Can, can, you, uh, can you read a little bit about this? Our eighth most expensive substance. Okay, it's a hard one. <laughs> uh, number eight, lysergic acid. Dithylamate LSD, 3,000 pyrogram. Lysergic acid, dithylamate abbreviated LSD, or LSD-25, is the most expensive drug on the list. A very strong mode altering a halocomedone at surprise pyrogram is only mitigated for users by its incredible incredible small dosage measured in millionths of grams. Its effects are unpredictable and depend on everything from the person's expectations to their surroundings to how they react to the ex uh, experience itself. Attached to this learning is a 45-minute video documentary on the uses and scientific background of LSD. Okay. Uh, LSD, uh, Saud, is a hallucinogen. Hallucinogen. It, in other words, it makes you hallucinate, makes you see things that aren't really there. Uh, and its price per gram is only mitigated uh, by its incredibly small dosage. Mitigated uh, means that, uh, okay, well, like a pain reliever mitigates the pain. It lessens the pain. It makes something not as bad, uh, anything, uh, either very physical or, or very abstract. Something that makes something less bad mitigates the negative aspects. Uh, all right. So, uh, okay, I rarely hear about this anymore. This was a big deal, in the United States at least, back in like the late 60s and early 70s, maybe even into the 80s, but lately, I, I don't know, maybe I just, maybe I just don't know, but I rarely see any, read any information about this. Uh, Saud, in your area of the world, does anybody use this LSD substance? Have you heard about it before? Has it been in the papers? Anything like that? No, uh, I know cocaine and uh, heroin. Uh -huh. Right. 
uh, uh, pro prohibited in my country. Uh -huh. the, the substance, it's, it's uh, new, new for me. Okay. I have no regarding this. Okay. Just to give you a little background, I know about this substance. It was. Do you know who created this? Uh, does anybody know? Open question. Uh, do you know who created this substance? Where this first? No. No. LSD. LSD. Yeah. Or where they were first really working on it. Uh, well, using it. Is okay. It the well, yeah, it was. But as yes, I, I don't remember who who invented it. But the the first people that started working with it and how it became introduced into society, you can thank the United States military. Yay, U.S. military! They were conducting they were conducting experiments. Yeah, they thought they could create some kind of. Um, a psychological warfare, psychological slash uh, physiological. They experimented with it to see what it would do. In fact, they experimented on American soldiers to see what it would do to them. Uh, anyway, they figured out that it wouldn't. <laughs> it had no military uses. But anyway, what happened was the people that they experimented on U.S. Milit U.S. soldiers then took this out into the street and kind of figured it out. So, there you go. Hooray. Uh, all right. LSD. Now, okay, I think that was the last drug. Now we're going to get into some other things. Okay, now this makes sense. Next one, Plutonium Max. Back to you. Plutonium 4,000 dollars per gram. Plutonium is the radioactive element most famous for its role in generation nuclear power. Uh, through nuclear fission, both in peacetime via nuclear reactors and in war via atomic bombs. bombs. It's poisonous flammable flammable and radio radioactive but occurs only in trace quantities in nature this video is documentary of plutonium's emergency through research into nuclear power okay no, poisonous a lot, nuclear a lot of power hard words out of hard words yeah well yeah Okay, but you did very well. Uh, um, actually, no problems. Uh, poisonous flammabic, that's interesting, which is to say flammable. Is it flammabic or flammable? I can't read it. And radioactive. Uh, all right, there it is. Plutonium, you've heard of it. Uh, okay, have you ever... Uh, Heard uh, Max about plutonium being sold on the black market? Uh, I think every every film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. shows uh, to us. About right, it. <laughs> exactly. You would. Uh, n you're exactly right. You would have to have never seen a spy thriller. <laughs> yeah, a and thriller every movie. time it yeah. it looks like yeah. Russian. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of, Max. I was thinking of how popular the theme is of uh, plutonium in the spy movies and spy thriller books. Uh, what a common theme that is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, We're getting down there. We've only got 10 minutes. What is this next one? Oh, my. What is this thing? Here's a new one. Uh, Ishmael, number six, please. Number six, finite. Thousand dollars per gram. Finite, which is named after its 1950s discoverer, Arthur C. D. Payne, is so rare that most people do not know what it is. 
<laughs> Until recently, mm -hmm. only a very small number of stones were considered large and clear enough to be worth cutting into gemstones. More recently, additional sources have been found, but it is still incredibly rare. This article details one game trader's long mission to add finite to his own collection. Okay. Uh, Ismail, you want to go pinite hunting? I'm not sure if it's painite or pinite, uh, as you yeah. pronounce it. I'm not. I'm not sure, actually, to, to be honest, which is correct. Uh, I found. You, yeah, I found this in Russian, and in by according yeah. to Russian version, it's painite, but painite. I'm not sure. Also, yeah. Okay, so that probably means it's painite. Usually, ite endings of minerals and uh, well. Paint it? Oh, no, no. Granite? Oh, I was going to say it's usually ite, but not always. Uh, sometimes it is the short version. Hmm. I'm still not sure, but okay, probably if it's that means it's probably painite. Anyway, Arthur C. D. Payne, it, it's pretty obvious his name was probably Payne. What a name, okay. Payne. Oh, anyway. What is the benefit from this store? What's that, Sab? What is the benefit from this store? Couldn't understand. Yeah, yeah, I, I <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's extremely rare. But looking at the picture here, Saad wants to know where, which is the expensive part. Which is the pain? I is it the purple things? Is it the black thing? I don't know, Saad. I don't know. I don't know if you're gonna go pain. I. Uh, um, searching for painite, I'm not sure what it looks like. You're going to have to do more research. I'm not sure which part of this chunk of rock we're looking at in the picture. What is the painite part of it? I have no idea. Uh, okay. But there you go. Uh, if you can find some, somebody will buy it. <laughs> Make a lot of money. Have you ever heard of this before, Ismail? No. I Maybe. haven't heard before. No, it's a new one. Okay, so pretty much probably everyone here is uh, learning a little vocabulary with this one. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Okay, whoa, another gem. It's surprising to be finding uh, gemstones at the top of our list, but looks like uh, looks like that's what we get. Uh, Wellington, can you read number five? Yes. Um, Tafate stone up to $20,000 gram. Um, the Tafate gemstone pronounced Tafate is purple to red and was first discovered in 1945. Count Edward Taffy bought a set of spinos and notes something out about one of them. The gemstone displays double refraction, while a spinal does not. Tafet was thus the only gemstone that was first identified through a facet gemstone. Hmm. Tafet is made up of magnesium, beryllium, and aluminum. It is the first known gemstone that has beryllium and magnesium as major parts. Currently, the only way it is used is as a gemstone. Okay, so there you go, Wellington. You can uh, buy your girlfriend or wife uh, <laughs> a lovely tarfite ring. No, uh, no. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I'm going to create a tar fight, a fake tar fight, <laughs> yeah. so that I can sell it. Uh, okay. Uh, interesting. All right. I uh, bought a set of spinel. spinels. Uh, these are like um, round rocks that are hollow in the middle that often contain gemstones, spinels. Uh, I believe that's what they are. Uh, okay. Anyway, there we go. In very interesting. All right, so if your if your uh, spouse or 
your girlfriend, whatever, starts asking you for a tar fight ring, you probably <laughs> should ru run the other direction. Just run away. Uh, okay. But even more expensive than that. Uh, next one here. Uh, uh, Jose, can you read about this one? Oops, here we go. Tritium. Yes. Come on, stop. Tritium. Right. Tritium is a radioactive uh, form of hydrogen made naturally by cosmic uh, rays and synthetically in nuclear reactions, including, including uh, nuclear weapons tests. In research, it's uh, used in fusion reactors and neutron generators. Tritium is also as everyday used uh, used by mixing tritium with a chemical that emits light in the presence of radiation. A continuous light source in, is made without the need of, for batteries. Rifle 6 and X6 lines are two examples of this. Mm. The ra radioactive uh, decay product of tritium is a low energy beta that cannot penetrate the the outer deep layer of human skin. Therefore, the main hazard associated with tritium is in internal exposure from inhalation or ingestion. This okay. article... Okay. That, that's, that's good. Uh, hmm. Interesting. So do not, uh, whatever you do, do not lick your rifle sights. <laughs> Don't breathe near an exit sign. Uh, okay. Rifle sights used to, used to target with a rifle. Interesting. Tritium. Uh, synthetically created. So, all right. So you can make yourself a tritium factory. Uh, okay, finally, here it is. All right, at number three. Uh, Saud, number three. Diamonds. 55,000 meter ground. And metallurgy diamond is a metal stable altero of carbon where the carbon atoms are uh, arranged in a variation of the face centered cubic uh, crystal structure called a diamond la uh, lat latex. Diamond is least stable than graphite, but the conversion rate from diamond to graphite is negligible at ambient condition. Diamond is renowned as a metal with superlative physical qualities. Most of which originate from the strong covalent bonding between its atoms and particular diamond has the highest hardness and thermal conductivity of any block material. Those properties determine the major industrial ab uh, application of demand and cutting and polishing tools and the scientific application is diamond knives and diamonds uh, and wool silks. There you go. Uh, okay, that was really, really more super advanced English. Very good job, so I, I must say. Excellent job in actually pronouncing some very, very difficult words. Uh, all right, that was pretty technical. In other words, diamonds, very, very hard stuff. <laughs> okay, as, as we all know. Um, uh, okay, diamonds can be created by humans, but uh, they're not really exactly the same. So in any case, all right, major industrial applications. All right, we've only got a couple seconds here. Uh, like a minute left. So Max, can you can you tell us about number two? Twenty-seven million dollars a gram. Ouch. California one. Two hundred fifty-two. Yeah. Is a rare radioactive isotope used commercially 
other reliable cost effective neutron source of for prompt gamma neutron activation analysis <laughs> of coal. Wow. Yeah, really well. <laughs> Cement wow. and materials and for detection and identification of explosives, land mines and unexploited military ordnance. Our uses include neutron radiography, reactor startup sources, cancer treatment, and calibration standards. Okay, Did you mention that specialized. cancer treatment usually very, very expensive? Material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why? And I know million. why. Now you know. Okay, two or three of our items on our list today were used in cancer treatment, and they were kind of unexpected uh, items, but uh, yeah, things I'd never heard of. Sure. Californium. All right. Get my hands on some of that stuff. And uh, finally, if you really want to make money, gentlemen, since we're out of time, I'll quickly read this one. Uh, get yourself a pocket full of antimatter. <laughs> <laughs> At $6.25 trillion per gram, you can make some money. <laughs> and it's okay. so secret because we don't have <laughs> <eight much. laughs> That's right. It's so tiny. You can't, can't you see it in the picture here? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You need an you need a electron microscopic uh, online antimatter detector to see it. That's right. Okay. What is antimatter? It's composed of antiparticles, which have the same mass as particles of ordinary matter, but have opposite charge and other particle properties. When particles and antiparticles meet, there's a large release of energy in the form of high energy photons, or gamma rays, neutrinos, and lower mass particle antiparticle pairs. The reason antimatter is so expensive is that it's very, very hard to make. You cannot make this in your bathroom. <laughs> it does not last long in our regular particle-filled world. And a matter is currently made in batches that are measured by the number of atoms and last only minutes. All right, so there it is. Uh, there's our list. So now you guys know how to make uh, a lot of money. You guys can all get very, very rich. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.